CataractCoach.com, choosing toric Iowa steps. With the rule, against the rule, posterior cornea, what if you're between steps? How do you choose all this? Now remember when you're doing your keratometry, you're looking at the anterior cornea. And there actually is a posterior corneal surface. You can measure both anterior and posterior surface if you use a tomographer or other similar device. A topographer is just going to measure the anterior cornea, same as a keratometer. Now, there are online calculators that give you the assumption of what a typical posterior cornea is like. And that means for patients who have against the rule astigmatism, you tend to add up and go up one toric step. And for patients that have with the rule, you wimp it down and go down to a slightly lower toric step. You also have to take into account the phaco incision and where it lies. In the case you're looking at now, the astigmatism is with the rule, but the incision is against the rule. So whatever effect that incision has, you have to take it into account. In doing this toric lens, of course, you also have to go behind the lens like we did and remove all that viscoelastic because removing that viscoelastic is going to help this lens stick to the posterior capsule and avoid further malrotation. If you leave viscoelastic, that acts as a lubricant and the lens can slip. Now, if you're between toric steps, some of the conventional wisdom is you go down and use the lower number because you don't want to overcorrect. Studies have shown, however, that whether you leave the eye with a quarter of astigmatism with the rule or a quarter against the rule, the effect is relatively similar. Though be warned, patients tend to favor the way they've always had it. If you've had with the rule your whole life, you tend not to mind being left a little with the rule. Finally, rotation is very important. If you're exactly on the axis that you're intending, then you get the full benefit and the full power of the toric lens. If you are mal-rotated by just a few degrees, you start to lose that power. And a good rule of thumb is you'll lose about one third of the power for every third at uh, 10 degrees. So a 30 degree mal rotation, which is just one clock hour, would be complete loss of the torque benefit. And then beyond that 30 degrees, you'll induce an astigmatic change in a different or wrong meridian. So for this situation, some surgeons like to use a slightly higher torque power. So if there is a little bit of misrotation by a few degrees, that can be made up for by the higher, higher torque power. Look at the example here. If you're exactly on the green line, the intended axis, you get the full torque power. But if you rotate it away, 30 degrees away, you'll lose all torque power. And therefore, moving it 10 degrees off is about one third of the torque benefit lost. So this is important and this is why alignment is so key. And then checking the eye here at the end of the case, you have a nice rexus overlap, good position of the lens, and nice angle of rotation at the right meridian.